Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're gonna look at some common issues which you might encounter when importing a flight plan which you exported using Little Nav Map. And to show you, I simply accepted the default settings of uh, Little Nav Map, uh, exported the flight plan. So let's first get it imported in Flight Simulator. And to do that, I can do this via the world map, go to the space, and then hit space again, load from the Xbox, and or load from this PC, sorry and then i will use this option and this is already where you see the issue right if you look at this it only has one two three i would say uh, navigation options and if you want to know what kind of options those are right you can uh, go over here because this one is an airport this is an airport and then we've got a special icon in here and if you scroll down the list you will find that it's a uh, air nav right so it's an air nav waypoint which is uh, over there so Kind of weird, right? Because, hey, if I would go back to NavMap, which I will do in a few uh, seconds, you will see that there are far more information added there. So let's do that. Let's go to little NavMap, and then let's look at the flight plan, which is over here. And this is where you can see there are far more things being added, right? You can see different uh, identifiers. You can see the procedures which they're part of, including stand instrumental departures, standard terminal uh, arrival routes, and uh, finally the approaches as well as the transitions and if we look at the map over here everything looks fine but hey it doesn't look like this when we look at flight simulator itself right so why doesn't it look like this so the first thing you need to understand is that little nav map doesn't export all the settings that's good to know right because if it doesn't export the set export all the settings what kind of settings are not exported if you go to file, you can go to export options and that's where you find the option export waypoints for approaches, SID and star and airways. And hey, didn't we miss those things? So let's first do that. So we're gonna export everything and then see if it resolves the issue. If we now hit export again, it will ask us, hey, do you want to export it? Do you want to override it? Yes, fine for us. Uh, zooming out, going back to flight simulator, go back and reset the view and let's see if we can now import it correctly i would say be careful don't be too optimistic yet because still things can go wrong in this case you still see that things are going wrong right what did they do why where are the, those information points and that's also what i thought the initial i i would say the initial time when i found out the uh, the issue and one of the things I observed is that there are no departures being selected, no arrivals are being selected, as well as no approaches are being selected. Because if you would do that, right? So for example, if I would select the approach, I can see that I can select multiple approaches. Uh, in this case, to Inky, uh, to, B, uh, to BI, to A, to B. And that's where and I started to compare those items, including those for the arrivals, which includes Inky to R. And the approaches, which do include uh, the uh, different uh, ILS approaches or ILS, yeah, ILS approaches, ILS 24Z from Zulu and Yankee from, yeah, oh, and Y from Yankee. So let me hide it because that's irritating. Here you can see them. So let's go back to the flight plan and let's first focus on those standard international departures 2BI, 2A, and 2B. Remember that? Now, if we look at little nav map, you can see that it says here 1B. Well, 1B is not on the list anymore. Well, that clarifies why it doesn't work, right? Because this is simply an old departure route, which it doesn't use anymore. But hey, if I scroll to the uh, right and go to the uh, departures, I don't see that number being mentioned here at all. That triggered me. So... Remember my video about RACs, if you don't remember it or if you didn't watch it, there's a link uh, on the top of the screen and you can, can select it. Those RACs will contain the nav aids and the nav aids are regularly updated, right? Which means that all the approaches are, or some of the approaches might be have been modified. Uh, some of the SIDs have, might have been modified, even complete beacons could be, I would say, uh, be deprecated. So, if you check the scenery library, you can see Navigraph is here and it's set to RAC cycle 1801. 
Well, it already clarifies one of the issues or could potentially clarify it because this is a very old one. And although the option here has set, been set to select automatically, if you leave it like this, it will still use it. So what you need to do, if you don't have a Navigrop subscription and or if this or if you have got a Navigrop subscription but this version isn't updated, deselect this option. Then go into the menu again and say, do not use Navigraph database. It will reset your flight plan if you're unlucky because it pulled the Navigraph or it sets Navigraph as the higher priority compared to Flight Simulator. Uh, so keep that in mind. And once we're there, we can say, start planning from scratch. And if we would now look at these identifiers and then let me zoom into runway 24 because that's the one we're gonna depart from. You can see that Inky now has the 2BI, 2B, etc. Right, so I can, I can select them, and then based on that, uh, I will be able to see. Okay, hey, where does the flight plane go to, or where that route go to? But if you want to see everything, you can still right-click it and say, hey, show me all the information. And in this case, uh, we're going to select uh, Inky uh, 2BI. Let me double check. Well, yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to click it and then say insert, right? Just as normal, nothing special. And now you can see that it contains the correct standard instrumental departure identifier. And the same thing can be done, of course, for the uh, standard terminal approach routes, right? Or arrival routes. Always mixing them up. Here we've got Inky 2R, which brings us to uh, Kako and then Dovmu. Uh, so this could be a potential one. Well, let's add it. Uh, insert into the flight plan. And there it says, okay, hey, I need to select the runway. Well, runway 24 is the one which you want to use. So you can see that we're flying back. And then we need to make a turn. And then back to Rotterdam Dijk Airport. But as you can see, the turn is, I would say, almost, I would say, 45 degrees. Which could potentially be a challenge because we didn't select the let's approach yet so to do that we're gonna open this and based on this we can also see that this is not different so if you would compare the rac from 1801 with the latest one there was a transition uh rod here and also here uh so the dove moves those are the replacements uh, you can see that rot is not used anymore so i can select it and if i select it and zoom out a bit then you can see that okay hey it makes a nicer turn so let's insert this one insert it in the flight plan and now our flight plan looks say kind of cool except that i would say this looks a little bit weird but fine so now we fixed both of the issues uh, let's hit uh, export again so we're going to make sure that the export options are set correctly i'm going to make sure that i hit export again uh, hit save and then say yes zooming out again going back to flight simulator let's first reset the map Reset, that's fine. And then we're gonna load the flight plan. Here we go. And now the flight plan has been loaded, including all the, I would say, beacons which we need to visit. Or uh, One of the things which I figured out is that you really need to keep, pay close attention because you can see that in this case, it has, it has added all those air navs. Uh, but make sure that they are all added correctly. Because if you look this one, <clears throat> you might also observe that there's one missing, right? Because if we would go back to the uh, little nav map, you would see that in this case, uh, Kako and Rovox, they are not, or Kako at least is not added. Rovox, uh, we need to double check. But there are some things missing. So although I'd say it should import everything correctly, you can see that Flight Simulator doesn't always like it. So my tip for you is if you want to make sure that you're using the correct SIDs, go to the list. It's not funny to do. And then make sure that you select the correct one. Uh, so I'm going to select 24BI. It's not being selected. Then we're going to go to the uh, arrivals, Inky 2R. And now you can see that, hey, Kako is being added. And the approach, we're going to select uh, ILS-24Z from Zulu. 
which is not in the uh say for some reason not in the navigraph or sorry not in the navigraph not in the little nav map uh database file and now you've got a correct flight plan and by doing these kind of things you're also making sure that if you're using one of the default flight simulator aircrafts that the flight plan will be imported correctly into it right you can always select the options to not at at these points right to simply set it to direct and then once you're in the aircraft uh, load those sid stars and approaches but if you want to make your life easier you can do it uh, that like this so although little nav map contains the data it might still result in that if you're importing it in flight simulator it doesn't work 100 correctly although you're using the uh, option to use flight simulator as a navigation source so in this video we looked at what's causing those uh, i would say approaches not to be or procedures i should say not to be correctly imported which things you need to make sure in little nav map and the other thing of course is what are the workarounds which you need to apply to make sure that you can use it in flight simulator 2020 here ends this video i hope you liked it if you liked it then consider to use the like button of course don't forget to hit the notification button so you're being let's say uh, notified if i'm posting new videos and of course subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more uh if you've got questions then of course feel free to post them in the comment box below this video I try to answer them regularly and sometimes it also brings or up some new topics where I can create some new videos about. So feel free to drop them there and I wish you happy flying. Thanks for watching and see you next time.